Well, staying in Kenya, a video of Kenya's president Uhuru Kenyatta doing the dab dance while meeting a group of dancers at State House has sparked different reactions on social media. Mr. Kenyatta is campaigning for re-election and has been on a nationwide campaign to urge young people to register as voters before February the 15th when the process closes. He has been meeting with celebrities to help in his strategy to get out the vote. People have been using hashtag dab of shame to criticize him, saying that he is focusing on campaigning, yet the country is facing difficulties, including a long-running strike by doctors. Elsewhere now, Somalia has elected a new president, Mohamed Abdullahi Fremajo, with the support of two former presidents who have also been praised for their show of unity. Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud and Sharif Sheikh Ahmed lost to Mr. Mohamed in a race contested by more than 20 candidates. Somalia has changed presidents 12 times since 1960 and has had two coups and the assassination of another leader. Mr. Mohamed's election extends Somalia's long-held tradition of never re-electing an incumbent. Back here in Nigeria, residents of Isheri, North Jerry, Lagos State have again been thrown into panic following the abduction of the estate secretary, Mr. Dayo Adekoya. He was abducted early this morning by 11 gunmen who stormed the estate last night, shooting into the air before abducting him at about 1 a.m. An eyewitness report says that three security men were killed by the gunmen as they tried to prevent them from escaping with Mr. Adekoya. Angry residents of Isheri North Estate, some crying. <laughs> Others just looking confused after the kidnap of the estate secretary, Mr. Dayo Adekoya, who lives in this duplex. The gunman reportedly shooting into the air for over four hours, scaring residents from coming close. I started hearing gunshots around midnight. Was scared, didn't know what happened. Subsequently started seeing police vans and all that. I had to wait till morning. When I woke up, went to the gate, found out that um, someone had been kidnapped and um, some security guys killed in the process. The house of Mr. Dekoya is now manned by armed policemen and our crew was not allowed into the premises to get a feel of how the family is faring. Not even the police officers could volunteer any information. You can't speak with us, sir. No, I can't. It's not my, within my shit. This incident also claimed the lives of three security men who were trying to stop the armed men from escaping with the victim. They did kidnap the country this year, this money. So, the time, the time we share, we get here from my own place. Around 12 o'clock, they were having some shooting all around the state. Everybody was running. So I put run to our place. The writer that we come, we came here, we meet the boys. They are black, black, they wear black, black clothes. They started attacking us. They, but they said they didn't have any gun. They destroyed the security them. They have no anything. They only give them a shocker. Imagine a shocker. Is it a bazaar? A small tear gas. Pepper tear gas, for that matter. See now, three people are dead. Two people injured, as I said now. I don't know what's what going to happen. This is the second time in six months that the estate will be witnessing a kidnap. The last one was in September 2016, when four landlords were taken away during their routine early morning exercise. Good. Although the Commissioner of Police of Lagos State has promised to go after the kidnappers, there may also be need to improve the policing of this estate, especially the swampy area where it is believed that the kidnappers may have escaped with their victim. In the meantime, the Governor of Lagos State, Akiwame Ambadi, has condemned the kidnap of Mr. Dayo Adekoya, calling it a wicked act. The statement released by the Chief Press Secretary, Mr. Habib Haruna, orders the police to ensure a prompt arrest of culprits and the rescue of the victim. In the words of the governor, quote, 
The state police command must ensure the prompt arrest of kidnappers who stormed the Sherry estate area, killing three security guards and taking away a landlord, end of quote. He says this period is a trying time for the people of the area, given assurances that the police will do its job. And following that directive, the Lagos State Commission of Police, Fatai Owosheni, has promised to bring the kidnappers to book and free the victim. Mr. Owosheni, who visited the scene of the kidnap, warns the residents to be more vigilant and provide information that can help the police with its investigation. He also spoke on the risk posed by the porous borders aided by the water body in the neighborhood. As regards to whether uh, it's a shortfall, there is no society that is uh, completely free of crime. Um, in between the time we had the last one and now, it's um, a kind of time. And you have gone round with us around this estate. This is borderless. You've seen the porosity. You've also seen how the vulnerability of um, the households that are living here. Um, the reason for coming here is not to come and do rhetorics and uh, the talking what is not. It's the practicability of the whole thing to do a thorough assessment of the estate um, and see how we can work with the households here, um, considering the challenges, the security challenges, the challenges to policing an estate of this nature, um, infrastructure-wise, and of course, as I've told you, you've seen that it's borderless, it's uh, very porous. So to work with them um, with a view to ensuring that one, um, we don't have a reoccurrence um, and that if anything is going to happen again, that um, the way we respond will be more holistic and to be able to overcome. In other news now, seven powerful allies of Zimbabwe's newest opposition party, accused of plotting to keep 92-year-old President Robert Mugabe in power, have been expelled. The Zimbabwe People First Leader, Joyce Mudu, says those expelled from the party include former State Security Minister and the former ruling ZANU-PF Party spokesman. The group had joined Ms. Mudu during the independence war against minority rule in breaking away from ZANU-PF after a bit of fallout with Mr. Mugabe. But the new party has been hit by division since its formation in March 2016, and the divisions escalated after it was defeated by Zanubiev in a by-election last month. The state-owned Herald newspaper reported that the Mutasa-led group rejected expulsions and announced that Ms. Mudu had been expelled from the ZIMPF. And the Gambian president, Adama Baru, has reiterated his pre-election promise that the country will not be pulling out of the International Criminal Court. This move would reverse the decision of his predecessor, Yaya Jame, who had denounced it as the International Caucasian Court for the Persecution and Humiliation of People of Color, especially Africans. Mr. Baru made the comments after a meeting with the European Union Commissioner for International Cooperation and Development, Nevin Nimica, in the capital, Banjul. Meanwhile, the EU has pledged 75 million euros to boost its financial aid to the Gambia.